们还是要控制我们的家单，没有工资，我们怎么养养活我们的家人和小孩？没有工资，我们怎么在深圳生存下去？你们要有啥欲望啥一交啊？那一些是什么当家？你们有不是的是吗？你们能想不到这样的事情吗？啊！年底的这就没人管啊！这些农民工在这儿讨薪这么长时间，无家可归，天天下雨也在这住着。你就来找了。你的人能找到这片货呀？找不这片都都今年的货很少。那那一个月能赚到 As China's economy continues to decline, workers in different industries experience unpaid or delayed wages. What are they supposed to do? Today, we will share some of their stories. On October 7th, 2023, the local government owed wages to migrant workers who had no choice but to hold banners to protest and demand to get paid. The banner reads, "Gurjoba Group owes us migrant workers the hard-earned money." February 9th, 2024, was Chinese New Year's Eve, one of the most important holidays for Chinese people. Those who work out of town usually try to return home to celebrate the New Year with their families. But many rural workers who have worked hard for a year are unable to get their wages before the New Year. On February 4th, 2024, hundreds of construction workers occupied a local city hall in Sichuan Province. They were first seen crowding in the open space in front of the building, then to the second floor, seemingly waiting for the government staff. And later, the video showed the workers crowded in a room, a full room of people waiting to get their paychecks. For those migrant workers who can't get their wages, their situation is simply miserable. Some had to sleep on the streets when trying to get their money. This video was filmed in a city in southern China. The cameraman was sad and angry seeing the workers sleeping on the streets. 年底的这就没人管啊！这些农民工在这儿。It's the end of the year. No one is in charge. These migrant workers have been here to collect their wages for a while. They are homeless and they sleep here even when it rains. On February 8, 2024, workers had no choice but to protest and hope to collect their old wages in one of the industrial parks in Xinjiang. A woman cried as she spoke to the police at the scene. Let me ask you: We are just workers who want our wages paid. Have we broken any law? It was close to Chinese New Year. Having worked hard for an entire year but not getting paid, her desperate story and cry made the police at the scene lower their heads and speechless. Every year before the Chinese New Year, many migrant workers in various parts of China have to go on a journey to protest and recover wages owed to them. On February 13, 2024, a migrant worker revealed that wage arrears were very common in his region. For us in the construction industry, money is owed to us for up to one or two years. Why are migrant workers owed wages? A small business owner in Shenzhen said, "It's mainly contractors who owe wages to rural migrant workers because they have to advance all the construction money, including workers' wages. It's common in the real estate industry." Here is a video showing more than a dozen police cars parked outside a government entrance in Hunan Province on New Year's Eve, February 9, 2024, with hundreds of police officers on standby. It turns out that the workers had blocked the entrance to the county government after failing to get their wages. On February 9th, 2024, the eve of the Chinese New Year, construction workers of the China Construction Third Bureau in Jiangsu Province still didn't get their hard-earned wages. A migrant worker told overseas Chinese media that the daily wage for a small job at the construction site is now about 20.6 dollars, while the daily wage for a large job is usually 27.5. It's usually a little bit per year, he said. Generally, they give you a little bit of money every year. For example, a year's worth of wages gets settled at the end of the year. 
If the amount is small, you might get the full amount. If it's big, you might only get some and you have to continue to work for them in the coming year. On November 6, 2019, the Chinese government website announced that all cases of wage arrears that occurred before the end of October 2019 should be cleared by the end of 2019. And other cases of wage arrears should be cleared by the end of 2020. At the end of 2020, the State Council issued a document titled, National Response Platform to Root Out Wage Arrears. At the end of 2021, then-Premier Li Keqiang said in a meeting that he wouldn't allow the delay of wages of rural workers and would clean up malicious delays of wages. On January 5, 2024, current Chinese Premier Li Chang held a meeting and said that he would crack down on malicious non-payment of wages. In reality, the Chinese government has increased their censorship of stories of workers trying to recover their own wages. Thus, you don't see as much of the news online where workers protest to recover their wages in China's intranet. So what's the story? How come these bosses don't have the money to pay their workers? One migrant worker reveals bosses who owe wages and who often refuses to pay on purpose. They have the money but they just don't pay you. Workers don't have leverage to fight back and the government doesn't support you at all. He adds, have you heard of malicious wage collection? It's a term invented by the government. They won't let you collect wages, but the money is still owed. It's said to be discussed later, but when? In China, the people are just victims. Here is a video showing that on Chinese New Year's Eve, migrant workers hadn't received their wages. <laughs> In March 2024, on the streets of Shenzhen, a young man was beaten by the police for demanding his wages. He spoke out to the onlookers, pedestrians and policemen on the street about his life story. Why? For those of us who work in factories, those of you who work know how much money we make a month. That's all we make. Still, our bosses make all kinds of deductions from it, and they control us and make us work overtime. How can we support our families and children without getting our wages? How can we survive in Shenzhen without them? We just want to get a raise and get back the money we are supposed to get from working holidays. But the Labor Bureau doesn't protect our rights. The boss has even accused us of making trouble and that we have some ulterior motives. He has assets of tens of millions, hundreds of millions, but we only make 2800 to 4100 after working from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So, what's wrong with raising our wages to get back what we are supposed to get? We haven't done anything wrong. The boss accused us of making trouble. You police just ran over there. You believed him and beat us up. What are those notices posted in your police station? Are you going to treat our injuries after the beating? No. Am I right? Because we are like ants in your eyes. <laughs> You never speak for us, the people. This young man's words brought silence to the police at the scene. He spoke the minds of many migrant workers. They work hard but don't get paid or have their wages deducted or fined for various reasons. The police don't offer justice to the masses, but rather use violence against them. On April 10, 2024, the workers in Shandong province went to the local court to claim their wages, but the court rejected the case. They were forced to write return my herder and money in big letters on white cloth, wore them on their bodies and then marched around. They came to a senior home and sat down chanting, return the hard earned money of the common people. We have come to demand our hard earned money. Have a look everyone, return the people's hard-earned money. All these videos seem to suggest that migrant workers protesting and demanding their old wages seem very common in China. According to the Hong Kong-based China Labor Bulletin, as of May 8, 2024, a total of 1,725 protests occurred in China over the past six months, most of which were for wages. A netizen on the X platform posted, Don't kneel if you want to get your wages. Kneeling is considered to be disturbing the social order and you will be subjected to administrative penalties. Attached is a photo showing a decision from an administrative penalty from a branch of the Beijing Municipal Public Security Bureau. 
It states that Liu Chang, a 32-year-old Han Chinese guy, disrupted the order of his employer by kneeling in front of a government agency in Beijing at 1600 on February 18, 2024. He was caught by the police who gave him a warning on the spot. In response, one netizen said, even kneeling is considered picking quarrels and provoking trouble. Another one said, if it's picking quarrels and provoking trouble anyway, why don't you stay standing? The guy was admonished on the spot by the police for kneeling to demand his wages. But there are even more absurd cases where migrant workers face jail time for doing the same thing. On March 16, 2016, a public trial was held in Sichuan province. Eight migrant workers were sentenced to prison ranging from six to eight months, with two of them receiving suspended sentences. Here are photos for that rally. This trial aroused public controversy. Later, the official website had to take down the relevant reports due to public outcry. People have commented that outrageous CCP officials didn't get tried publicly. The capitalists who maliciously defaulted on wages didn't get tried publicly. But migrant workers who worked with sweat and blood to feed their families were put on public trial. A Hebei-based migrant worker who has worked in China's construction industry for more than 30 years said with great sadness that the source of migrant workers' outstanding wages lies in the Chinese government. The Beijing authorities want to stimulate production and investment, so when they have no money, they borrow for projects, and it seems that they have borrowed up to 500% of the total amount of the government revenue. For example, the government's revenue is only 13.7, but it borrows 68.8 to finance projects such as schools, hospitals, road construction, greening, and water supply. He said that when the government allocates a sum of money, the official who signs the agreement must take a cut. For example, for a project that costs US 138,000, US 69,000 is given to the official who signs the agreement. The money isn't transferred electronically by WeChat or Alipay, but by sacks of old banknotes and the money isn't sent to the official's home, but by cars. One car in the front and one in the back. They drive on the road till they reach a spot with no surveillance. Then, two people carry sacks of old banknotes and drop them into the car of the corrupt official. Where are the witnesses? There are none. This is what the person who did the deed told me afterward. He revealed that the Chinese government's public projects have a serious problem of owing arrears of wages to migrant workers. How can ordinary developers dare to do this? Only when there is government power behind the project and only government-backed bosses dare to do this. One lawyer from mainland China told the overseas Chinese media that the main responsibility of owed wages lies with the government because it's the government's major infrastructure projects that have owed wages, the state-owned enterprises and large companies that have owed wages, and the powerful who have owed money to the vulnerable. The government is untrustworthy and immoral. Anyone can default and bully the most vulnerable migrant workers. This is also the most immoral part of Chinese society. Lai Jianping, chairman of the Democratic Front of Canada, analyzed four scenarios that lead to migrant workers being owed wages. He said, One is when the construction payment fails to get settled, such as the homes aren't selling or buildings becoming rotten-tailed or unfinished, resulting in the construction company not being able to get the funds and migrant workers not getting paid. The second is the overrun budget. For example, the government budgets $1.37 billion for a highway, but it ends up overspending, costing $2 to $3 billion, which means the government owes money. At present, China's urban investment companies are hundreds of billions of dollars in debt, a considerable part of which is owed construction fees and wages for migrant workers. The third type is the misappropriation of construction funds. For example, money has been set aside for a certain project, but the money is used for something else. In the end, no money is left to pay the wages. The fourth type is omnipresent corruption. Executives of the construction company will ask for bribes from the contractors. If contractors refuse to comply, things will be made difficult for them. Construction funds will be in arrears. In some cases, they even refuse to pay. As a result, migrant workers won't get paid either. According to an online video, on March 22, 2024, the China Construction 5th Engineering Group, a central enterprise, was in arrears with wages in Guinea. It triggered a protest from local workers. As can be seen, African workers even wrote in simplified Chinese characters in a banner, migrant workers want their hard-earned money. The video shows many workers gathered together, including Africans and Chinese. One Chinese person said, let's settle this peacefully. 
According to China's Netties, a netizen with the handle name as a national machinery manufacturing engineer and national senior engineer on an online social media platform reported that staff of China Construction Fifth Bureau was held at gunpoint by African workers, demanding their wages for a construction project in Africa. He said, China Construction Fifth owes wages to African workers. They put a gun to their heads, they dare not say anything, and obediently paid the outstanding wages. A netizen with the handle name of Look China posted, China Construction Fifth Engineering Bureau owed workers wages in Africa, so locals armed with AK-47 guns went to demand their wages. They were so frightened that they paid the owed amount on the same day. Facts have proved that when you have a gun in your hand, there is no such thing as malicious demand for wages. A photo is also attached. Imagine how Chinese migrant workers would feel when they come to know this story. On December 3, 2023, a blogger in Shandong interviewed older migrant workers on the street looking for day jobs, jobs that settle daily. They usually start their day at 4 or 5 a.m. before sunrise. What time did you come? I'm here at 5 o'clock. Can you find work most of the time? I can work for two days at most. What time did you come? I'm here at 5.30 a.m. 5.30 a.m.? You have been waiting here since? I haven't got any work since then. Do you make enough money to live on? No, I don't. I came at 7 or 6.30 a.m. How many days a month can you work? Not many days. There was very little work this year. How much can you make in a month? I can make about $275. That's just enough to cover our basic necessities. The following video shows a father who is a migrant worker sitting in front of a bank counter, ready to remit to wish a money to his son who is attending school. The shirt he wears has several holes. He can't even buy a short sleeve shirt for a few bucks. This is a migrant worker and a father in China. Migrant workers live in poor conditions. This video shows potato collectors in Inner Mongolia resting in their shacks while police officers walk in to check if their phones are registered with the anti-fraud app. It's a spying app, in essence, to monitor individuals. As can be seen, migrant workers are the working poor in general. They work hard and live in awful conditions when it comes to food and shelter. They have children at home, elderly parents to support, plus their own living expenses. When they fail to recover wages owed to them, what will it mean for them and their families?